Well, thank you for the discussion on uh, whether we are prepared for this activity that we expect to have in, in the high north. And uh, look closer into how we could do something about the emergency preparedness and through, among others, cooperation across borders. We have, uh, as Bob talked about, established a broad network uh, to focus on these issues. And we're following closely the activity in, in the north, both when it comes to the cruise ship industry and the oil and gas industry. Uh, as has been said before, we have a lot of good institutions and agreements in, in the north. In addition, we have also frequent meetings, exercises, training, and we have open communication lines. And definitely we have trust-building relations and efforts towards building people together. Three weeks ago, the Norwegian Coast Guard was an ominous visited Arkhangelsk for the first time. That was the first time that the Coast Guard ship was so far east in, in Russia. And this is an example of even in periods of political turmoil, we can keep these relations open and discuss common challenges and opportunities. This is an example of how we can cooperate, best practice on linking people together, playing soccer, having good discussions and learning for the years to come when it comes to activity and preparedness. The partnership issues are central in the Marpar project, as we are especially focusing on how to cooperate when it comes to large scale search and rescue operations and oil spear recovery operations. And this is an area where we have to cooperate because the capacities in the north are strictly limited. We have been looking at some large-scale incidents. The Maxim Gorky case is a good case on the cruise ship uh, sector, and we've been looking into some of the oil and gas campaigns that have been going through, at, uh, among others, Greenland and, and in Russia. And the worst case scenarios will be that we have the need for emergency capacities in every aspect of it, including search and rescue, firefighting, salvage, and police action. We have 14 universities right now, including also police and naval academies um, and research institutes focusing on, on these issues. And we try to establish an Arctic theme network on safety and security. We also have advisory boards for each country where we can discuss practical issues and disseminate the results. Examples of the worst case scenarios, we know well about them. Fire or grounding of large cruise ship, explosions on drilling rigs, and of course, single person violent actions or even terrorist acts. And this is a situation that we may hope to not feel will happen. The industry context, as you know it, is a lot of different types of activities. It is some Vessels and some operators with a long experience in the north. But what we will experience more and more is that there will be several organizations and vessels with a lack of experience in the north. And this means that we have to be very much focusing on the safety in, in, in the area and what demands to put on the uh, on the others. And we are going north and we're going east into Ice, more icy waters. This is from the Kara Sea campaign last summer. Most of these ships and the rig, uh, drilling rig was Norwegian, so we also feel the responsibility to take care of those people that is all around the world doing these operations. We focus very much on the capacities that is developed. And here we can see an example of a very advanced Russian rescue vessel in the Baltica. This is an example of how every country is doing their best to improve their capacities. 
But it is a huge area and it is a lot of activity. So this may be the future activity level that we have to plan for. Where the oil and gas industry is being obviously linked together in different countries. And we have a lot of internal, interregional and interregional transportation. And then it comes to the capacities available. We have had in several countries discussions on this, and we can see the governments are very much uh, in doubt about the capacities that we have. The technology level of the industry and the safety and security aspects, and also the number of units. It also, it's also a question about the institutional aspects. When it comes to host nation support, cross-border partnership, there's a lot of organizations that have to work together. And do we know, and do we have the manager, managerial concepts that is needed to link all those people and institutions together? In two weeks' time, we go to Finland for the Barnes uh, Rescue Exercise. And this is a good example of how we can train and exercise in order to, uh, to bring a lot of different institutions together, and from many countries. When it comes to organization and management, most countries are good at smaller scale and incidents within in their own jurisdictions. When it comes to larger scale operations, it's more challenging. And we have the example in all the 20, July 22nd uh, disaster that showed us that we are not so good at coordinating many organizations. We also need a lot of competence, and this is the second phase of the MARPART project. We will look into the, the way we are educating personnel for the industry, for the preparedness institutions, and we will do, go into the training and exercise concepts that we can see. This Here we can then develop more best practices across borders. Maybe we can also develop this further into a broader European, both a European network and an, an Arctic network. And the EU is definitely focusing on this through the last uh, Horizon 2020 program. And the examples of how we are doing is being on both sides of the, of the border, having observers in every part of the organization. This is also a very good example of cooperation. The Norwegian vessel data from the Postal Authority of Norway and the Russian vessel have time and Michigan. We're working closely on public border operations. Yes. So I will uh, conclude with saying that we have a maritime activity level that is quite complex. We have a lot of different CRRs and different demands. There is a need for preparedness regardless of emergency capabilities to be highlighted and acute, and the management and organization issues are important, in addition to the technology development side. We may benefit from building networks and cooperation across borders, and we need to establish the best practice concepts and joint competence programs. Thank you.